Once you learn more about Linux, you realize very quickly that distros don't really matter. If you want to put the effort in and actually compile stuff yourself, basically any distro out that can do whatever you want. Even so, some choices are going to be considerably more convenient than others, and I can totally understand that when you're new to Linux or you're trying to pick a new distro, it can be kind of paralyzing because there is a lot of choice out there, and if you try to look up lists on, you know, what the best Linux distros are of the current year, you'll find there is a lot of recommendations. And a lot of the recommendations aren't really structured around things that are good for your use case. So instead of dealing with all these lists, how about we just ask you some questions and then sort by what the distros can actually do. And that's what the thing we're looking at today can do. This is Distro Chooser. Basically, the way it works is it asks you a bunch of questions and then matches those traits with distros in its database. And from my experience, it actually does a fairly good job at doing so. Obviously, it's not perfect, but it gives you a much, much smaller list to work from, allowing you to much more easily do some research. First up, we're going to go through this as if I'm looking for a distro for myself. So let's go and start the test. Some distributions are made for a special purpose, some for daily use. What do you need? So in my case, I want a distribution for daily use. I want to use Linux for anonymous web browsing. Yeah, that's always nice to have. I prefer a distribution which is supported by game publishers. Yeah, that's also good to have as well. Now, in some cases, when you have certain answers, it's actually going to exclude earlier answers because some of those things can't actually be true at the same time. Now, in this case, I'm not actually sure why these two conflict with each other, but we'll see how that affects the results at the end. I want to execute all programs in an isolated environment. No, I don't really care about that. The user is visually impaired. No, I'm not. Uh, has live mode, can be started using disks or USB sticks to test it out before installing. Most distributions nowadays are like that. So sure, I'll take that. You may have spotted that warning for just a moment. So when there is a contradiction, or at least what it thinks is a contradiction, it'll show you that warning, but it doesn't actually give you enough time to actually react to it. Uh, that's something that should be improved. But anyway, how would you rate your proficiency with a computer? So I can troubleshoot most or all computer problems by myself, that's fine. How would you rate your knowledge of Linux itself? I have a good understanding about the Linux operating system. Now, you're actually able to mark things as being very important, and when you do that, it's going to be ranked higher above other things you've selected. So let's say gaming, for example, is something really important to you. You probably want to go and mark that to make sure it indicates distros that are better for gaming. In this case, though, I'm not going to mark anything as important. I'll just let it do what it's going to do. So on to the next question. So how many settings do you wish to tweak by yourself during installation? How many configuration variables should be filled with default values? So I want to choose the settings by myself. Yes. I want to use default preset values in the installation assistant. Don't really care about that. I want to configure as much as possible using graphical applications. Also, it's nice, but I don't really care about it. So next one we have hardware support. It is important to know how old your computer hardware is since some distributions won't run on old computers. So the performance of my computer is good. I don't experience any performance issues. My hardware supports 64 bit. Yep, that's perfectly fine. So source for help. Some distributions prefer articles in wikis for troubleshooting. What do you prefer? So I'm able to solve my problems using guides from wiki pages or tutorials. Yeah, perfectly fine. I make them myself. So Linux can use a lot of different user interfaces, desktops. Now, I would have preferred it to say desktop environments, so it's much easier for people to actually make those connections together. But at least explaining what we mean by a desktop is at least a good step. So many distributions ship one desktop as default. It's important to know if you have any preferences for a desktop concept, you can switch and install new desktops at any time. Also, it's very good that that's being explained as well. Now, in my case, I don't actually care. I'm going to install something afterwards, and it's not going to be like either of these anyway. So I'm just going to go and skip the question. You can skip as many questions as you want. You don't have to answer most of them. Most distributions are free. Some distributions offer additional support for a one-time fee. In my case, I don't really care about that. I'm going to have a free-to-use distribution. Next question is, different distributions pre-install different amounts of software. Some install a complete suite of basic programs to work out of the box. Other distributions offer only a base install to... 
to then let the user install what programs they want to use. So I want to choose the basic programs to install myself, or I prefer a distribution shipping all the basic programs. No, I want to go and pick everything myself. The license ideology of a distribution is a contentious debate. There are distributions using mostly free licenses, others also using non-free software. And if you're unsure about what that actually means, there is actually an explanation here about what free licenses mean. And that's great to have because outside of people who already care about free software, nobody knows what it means. And if you ask them about free software, they'll tell you that Discord is free software because they didn't have to pay for it. So in my case, I'm fine with using non-free licenses as long as my system works. So some distributions use online services to improve the user experience. This may affect the privacy of the user, i.e. the user can be tracked when using such online features. I do not want this. There are many ways to administrate a Linux distribution, e.g. to install software, and the explanation here basically tells you a little bit about systemd and how some distributions do not want to use it. Now, I would have preferred a more in-depth explanation about why some people like to avoid it, just in case you have no idea what it is whatsoever, but if you've never heard of systemd, then it doesn't really affect you anyway. So in my case, I want to install software using terminal commands. I don't really care about systemd, and I don't really care about an app store either. Now, software updates. Some distributions offer faster updates, which can affect system stability. What do you prefer? Do you prefer fast updates? This would mean a rolling release, or do you want stable updates? That would be a stable, fixed point, whatever you want to call it, release. I want fast updates, and let's see what it actually suggests to us. Okay, so the first result is Void Linux. Honestly, that makes perfect sense. Then Arch Linux. Yep, also really good suggestion for me. Gen 2. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Gen 2, but I can see based on the things that I answered why Gen 2 is in that list. I would like a question there about having to compile applications compared to using binaries. That would put Gen 2 much, much lower on the list, but with what's there right now, Gen 2 is a good suggestion. Then Artix, which is just Arch minus Systemd, also perfectly valid. Crux Linux I hadn't heard of until today, but it seems like it's in the same class of distros as something like Arch. And then as you go further and further down the list, the answers become less and less relevant. Now, the list is really, really long, but you're not really expected to go and look at the entire list. It's sorted in a way where you're only going to look at the things that are actually relevant to what your answers actually are. So as long as you keep it in like the first five, you generally get good answers. I'm going to go through this one more time, but as if I'm a regular person who is completely new to Linux. So let's see, I want a distribution for daily use, absolutely. I like to do some gaming, and being able to test stuff out before I install it seems kind of useful. So I don't know how to fix any of my own problems. I have little or no knowledge about Linux. Uh, installation presets. I want to use default values, and I also want to be able to configure stuff using GUI applications if there's something I actually know how to configure. Hardware support, I have a modern computer. As for my help, I prefer asking others for help. Sometimes tutorials are useful. Actually, I would prefer if these were actually split out into separate options, but it is what it is. So I came from Windows. I'm going to select this one. Uh, I don't really want to pay for it. That's why I'm going to Linux. I want to have all of my basic programs there when I install it. I don't really know what licensing is, so I'm going to say this one because I want my system to actually work. Uh, if it improves my user experience, I agree using online services. I don't know, maybe I'm not a big fan of this. I'm going to say I don't want this because I wasn't a big fan of all the telemetry that Windows had. And I want to install apps with an app store. Yeah, that's pretty useful. I don't even know what a system D is. And, you know, I, I, I will try to install stuff from the terminal, but I would prefer to use an app store. As for updates, I like my computer actually working. So I'm going to say stable updates. And let's see what we get this time. First suggestion is Linux Mint. What do you want me to say about Linux Mint? Linux Mint is a classic suggestion. It's perfectly fine. Zorin OS, also one that I've not used fairly extensively, but I've heard really good things about it. Uh, elementary OS, I've heard good things about as well. Uh, then we have the collection of Ubuntu's. We have Lubuntu, Ubuntu, Zubuntu, Mate, Kubuntu, and then something else that is not Ubuntu. But as you can see, it does also tell you that 
even though this is matching all of these other criteria, we can't really recommend this to you because of this specific thing. So some of the options in here are actually weighed fairly heavily. Things like telemetry, for example, are generally fairly important issues if you are a Linux user. Now, even once you've got your results, you can actually go back and change any of your previous answers. So let's say, I don't actually care about stable updates. I prefer to have fast updates. And I don't actually care if it's got a Windows-like interface or a Mac-like interface. Either is fine. So if we go and click on show results now, let's see what it's going to show instead. So Mint is still the top answer. Then we have Zorin still. Elementary. Oh, Solus is here now. Okay, that's kind of interesting. PC Linux OS, and then Ubuntu is lower. I would have thought that Manjaro would have been higher. I know it is on this list somewhere. Let's see where it is. Why is it not suggesting it? So, okay, that's really good. It doesn't recommend Manjaro because it is Arch-based and it's not really suitable for beginners. This actually is a really good answer. I've said this before, you shouldn't be putting new users onto something like Manjaro. It's perfectly fine if you disagree with me, that's just where I stand. Overall, I feel like this site is a really, really good resource. Obviously, it doesn't tell you exactly what distro to go and use, but that's not really the point. What it does is gives you a direction to actually look into. It says, hey, these things might be worth looking at, go and actually check them out. Because if you go to somewhere like Reddit, YouTube, or anywhere else out there, you'll notice there is a lot of really, really bad advice about what distro you should go and use. I have seen people unironically recommending Arch Linux to someone who has never used Linux. And as someone who did that, I'm telling you it's not a good idea for most people. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you think the suggestions are actually good? And do you think this is a tool that someone else should actually go and use? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to me, pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays and a podcast called Tech Over Tea. That's going to be it for me. So, I'm out.